find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sings. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Welcome back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 54. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, live coming at you from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm a video producer, and I kind of like wrestling, just a tad, to the point where uh, doing video for uh, guys in the local area, like the IWC, like the RWA, and helping so many others uh, through PittsburghWrestling.com, SorgatronMedia.com. Been at this for a little bit. Have a little conversation, talking to some of the friends that we meet out there on the road. Also on the road out there in San Antonio, Texas. He is the uh, commentator for NWA Inspire Pro. I'm not saying he's been done a little bit of writing for some NWA ringside as well. He's Eamon Payton. Eamon, too, please, on the Twitter. How you doing this week, sir? I'm doing fantastic. I'm gonna, I love that intro because it forces you to say Eamon a bunch. Eamon, 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 Eamon. <laughs> I, always, well, I always cringe at your last name because I'm like, how do I say that again? Patton, <laughs> Eamon Patton, you know, for hey. instance. So I've, yeah. I've had, uh, I've had, I have a couple people that are on the maybe list of, of saying their name rights because I don't say them enough. You know. Heads up, heads up to listeners. Sorg's known me for like six, seven years. <laughs> yeah, but how many of those years did I refer to you simply as the Wrestle Fan? That is true. So that I mean. True. When we have usernames and, and, and screen names, it's much easier. There was a point when we went to New York City to visit, visit Matt Mike, and I realized, um, um, like, we were looking him up, like his address or something, and realized I did not know how to spell nor say his last name. <laughs> so there you go. And, and how many years did we know him, you know, before, before doing anything else? So we've only met twice, though, in person. Anyways, uh, this is, of course, your Indie Mayhem show. We're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. If you liked it, check out that intro music at BasicSickness.com, uh, another Pittsburgh original. You can also email us at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline of 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on Twiddle, Twitter. Twiddle? Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google+. And, of course, you can subscribe to us. We're on Everything you can think of, there's links on there at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for iTunes, YouTube, um, Spreaker, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, for instance, uh, stuff like that. So this week, our guest, he's a guy here uh, around the Pittsburgh area. He's uh, the Neon Ninja, and uh, he hit the air uh, a, a little bit to do some traveling. I, I'm not sure if he's on the camera. It is Facade joining us with the best hat ever, by the way. Join us from wow. the video. There it is. There it is. <laughs> what up? Welcome to the Warp Zone, everybody. Craziness going on. <laughs> Craziness going on over there. Facade, we've had you. You're uh, well, one of the few returning guests, for one thing, I think. Um, maybe only like the second or third that I think we've had. But um, but uh, Back in the days of the good old indie, indie mayhem show. <laughs> the wrestling mayhem show. Way, way, way back. That's right. That's right. Now, now we have the multinational conglomerate that is Sogatron Media taking over the world. Even more so. Even more so. Uh, so one of the big things, because I had a great conversation with you a couple months ago after, and I know we were talking even before you went out, and we talked to actually uh, DJ Z. He's still Shima Zion to the rest of us uh, uh, about your trip to Russia recently. As you can see, you brought a little bit back with you. Did you get that in Russia? Is that is that do they have the on stuff like that in the Russia? They do actually uh, have these, but this coincidentally was actually a gift from Sweet Mikey P himself. Nice. So uh, it's actually you know a little little bit of a bro gift and uh, Christmas thing from him. But uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, who would think that this kind of combination of things would come together in such a way? And I would happen to be there. Excellent, excellent. So tell us, how did you uh, uh, find yourself getting hooked up uh, on this trip out to Russia? Well, uh, I had worked with the uh, fellas from out in the uh, International Wrestling Federation. That's a place out in Moscow that uh, Shima actually worked for. And, um, you know, they liked the match that they had with me, and uh, they thought I worked well together and everything. And, um, you know, so that was a, a part of it, too. But, um, you know, during their stay in Pittsburgh, we actually uh, had some time to train together and. um you know, I actually helped them out a little bit, and, you know, they really appreciated it. And so, you know, they invited me out 
for their uh, St. Petersburg debut. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so, so how did the trip go? I know, I know you, you, especially uh, you were you were tackling a lot of uh, logistical problems. I, I think it was the first time you you traveled to this extent. I remember having some conversations yeah. with you because I mean, I mean, uh, there's, there's two things I, I I recall from our conversations. If you wouldn't mind sharing, uh, <laughs> definitely. How do you get the merch? Because you bring them all with you every time I see you at an indie show, uh, which I think got bigger this time somehow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't get a chance to go over during intermission because I was dealing with some other stuff. But all I saw was just this giant wall of neon this time uh this past weekend at iwc um and of course you have spray paint and that as, as people you know fly that that's kind of an issue to bring a pressurized liquid such, onto a plane a thing. yeah no aerosols they're very very adamant about that so yeah. i had to make sure you know to inform the promoter that i had some kind of spray paint that it was a very big deal that i needed spray paint you know for you know my match and everything they were totally cool with that and that was no problem but um you know, <laughs> going out there, the, the main concern was the weight. Um, it wasn't it wasn't the uh, the amount of merch; it was the weight. How much could I possibly fit in there without you know going overweight, having to pay more? So uh, I had you know a few outfits that I had packed away in my one bag, and then I had my wrestling gear in my turtle shell, and uh, then I stuffed every single inch of that strategically with rolled t-shirts and a binder of uh eight by ten pictures wow. so. <laughs> and of course you know bandanas in there too but uh yeah it was pretty insane but um the thing is about the spray paint too so i wanted to bring the spray paint back as a little memento you know and you know that's kind of a tricky thing and uh being the little rascal that i am um I was going through uh, customs, and uh, they x-rayed my bag, and the woman said, sir, your spray. And I pointed to my ear. I'm like, what? What? She's like, sir, your spray. And I just, I'm like, I, 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 and she just said, she just waved me on, and I'm like, yes, that just happened. So I smuggled my Russian spray paint <laughs> back home. And uh, you know what else is funny, too? The spray paint that I got in Russia was made in the USA. So, uh, you know, it's all full circle. <laughs> full circle, indeed. Definitely, definitely. Um, awesome. So, uh, and I know uh, you, so how was the experience? Uh, you, what are, what, what's it like the performance of the Russian fans? I mean, we, we've, we've all experienced, well, most of us uh, in this show probably have seen, uh, you know, Wrestle Kingdom and seeing how, how the Japanese crowd reacts far, far differently than a U American crowd. It was, it was very, uh, very much illustrated by, uh, you know, Matt Stryker and JR on commentary uh, about that difference. Um, what, what are Russian fans like in comparison? Uh, Russian fans are very much like a, uh, you know, uh, independent crowd in the United States. But you know, the only thing being different is it seems like, uh, you know, they don't get that much wrestling. You know, talking to some of the fans there, um, you know, they say they only get to see, uh, you know, WWE house shows every so often. And, you know, sometimes they're not happy with, you know, the quality of the matches that the WWE puts on. And mm -hmm. uh, I was shocked by that. But, um, you know, there's no real uh, many independent promotions there. These are the only ones like in Moscow, St. Petersburg, all these uh in different cities so they're everything is a big deal to them but they can appreciate you know a, a, a faster paced style because not only have they been keeping up with it on the internet and you know that's how they know of you know people uh like zima and sanjay and people that have you know wrestled for this company before but um you know when they finally do see them they're you know that much more appreciative and you know they even come up to us after the show and you know, telling us, you know, thank you for coming and making this journey all the way here. You know, we really appreciate you coming. And they were just very gracious. Excellent. And I understand you, you had a little bit of a Pittsburgh connection uh, from the crowd, right? Oh, it was so funny because they announced me from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And uh, this guy, I think he was American just, like, out there for some something, you know. Because he, uh, he said, Pittsburgh sucks, Crosby sucks, Malkin sucks. <laughs> And I'm like, I looked, I looked over to this guy, and like everybody started chewing him a new one. Like everybody's like, "Ooh, boo you, you disrespectful boo!" Like the fans turned on him. It was awesome, but uh, coincidentally, you know that same guy that was booing me. Well, he wasn't actually booing me. So, 
Uh, but the same guy that was uh, hating Pittsburgh actually uh, came up to me after the show and was like, oh, you're, you did a great job, you know, thank you so much. It, your match was awesome, you know. And he's like, I'm sorry for, uh, you know, saying that. That was me. But it was funny, too, because uh, he had – I can't remember what team it was. He had a hockey jersey on, though. And I was like – it was but like it was a special edition when it was, like, green. I'm like, what the hell? But, uh, yeah, um, it was just, you know, funny that, like, somebody all the way out there would – find that of all things to, to pick with and to make fun of Malkin, no less. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. It, it makes sense. I mean, it's Russia. I mean, that's, uh, uh, the, the, I don't know where it originated hot of Canada, of course. Right. But I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's like a national sport still in, in Russia. So yeah, it's very big. Like they had, uh, um, their stuff for all their, uh, uh, I don't know what the, the it's like UF or they're all their national hockey and it's crazy too. Their their outfits look like they're like futuristic because they have like additional armor that's not on normal like ones. Really it's crazy. Yeah, they look like partially like cyber, cybernetic. <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, uh, what what did you uh, what did you think of Russia in general? Uh, was there a bit of a culture shock? Um, I know you were. Uh, it sounded like you're in good hands. Of course, uh, uh, Zima had been out there previously, and uh, I know I know a couple of guys. Uh, I think you were hanging with. Uh, we've seen uh, over here in IWC, of course, uh, Malkin. Uh, I can't remember his first name, of course. Um, but what, what was that like? Um, it was awesome. I mean, um, I expected it wasn't it wasn't so much of a cultural shock as I expected because I really don't know what I expected. I guess that I went out there thinking that everybody should be like Ivan Drago or something. Yeah. And like being a hard ass. But, uh, you know, everybody was super cool and they were really appreciative of Americans and like American like style and everything. Um, they drove American cars. They listened to a lot of American radio. Um, it's funny. One of the nights, uh, the first night that we went out, we, uh, we went and saw some, uh, monuments, like some, uh, historic landmarks, you know, at night. And there's a lot of cool stuff that was all lit up. And then, um, while we were out, a couple of the guys, there was like a, a guy that, you know, knew a lot of the stuff. And then there was a, a another guy, um, who kind of helped translate, but you know, um, so, uh, they said, uh, jokingly, you know, we should go to this place, doom sky and, uh, saying it's like this, just like a dangerous part of town or some crazy area. So, uh, we ended up going down there and, uh, it turns out to be something along the lines of, uh, Carson street, maybe in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's pretty interesting, but we only went to a couple places. The one place we went, though, they were it was karaoke, and it was American karaoke. They were playing just, like, random-ass songs, like uh, Closing Time and uh, Cotton Eye Joe. And I'm like, what? Cotton Eye Joe? Like, seriously? I'm all the way out in Russia <laughs> listening to Cotton Eye Joe on karaoke. I'm like, what the hell is this? That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, awesome. Awesome. Uh, so uh, anything else from Russia uh, uh, happened out there? Are you, weren't you with, like eating sushi or something? That, that, that seemed kind of odd. Yeah. I mean, um, we ate a little bit of their own food. It was crazy because like our scheduling was like all out of whack because I normally don't sleep like correct hours anyway. So, uh, you know, I basically kept the same sleep schedule as I did out there. We would just wake up and then uh, go to eat and, you know, we did like a, an interview for a radio station. And one day we did like a training seminar with uh, some uh, trainees from the school out there the other day. We had to show them one day and pretty much then we just hung out like old times all night watching wrestling in our hotel room. Nice. It was pretty funny. Nice. Nice. Well, you uh, you you had a pretty eventful weekend here. A lot of stuff going on here in the Pittsburgh area, of course, for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, uh, first of all, I, and I was there for this too. It was the first uh, show under new ownership for uh, uh, Justin Plummer for the International mm-hmm. Wrestling Cartel. We had Reloaded. Oh, there he is. There he is. I, okay, maybe you didn't have a good night then, but <laughs> I can see myself on your glasses. <laughs> uh, Reset button. Reset button, yes, yes. Hashtag reset button. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very technical night for me too. So I hope you didn't notice me screw up during your match. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> whoops, whoops. <clears throat> uh, it's just in front of four hundred people. Don't worry about it. Um, but anyways, <laughs> you don't know it, you don't show it. That's right. That's right. 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 Hey, you know that whole system's running on Windows XP on a ten-year-old laptop. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, that's happened a couple times too. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, uh, you of course were involved. What ended up being a four way match with yourself, end of the show, Andrew Palace, um, and uh, uh, newcomer Crimson and uh, uh, Brian Bowers, I believe, um, a Lance Storm trainee that's been really showing good stuff there in IWC, I think. Um, so, what was the vibe uh, with it all night? Like, was it a uh, uh, you know, uh, I know Chuck's still around, you know, but he's not the boss anymore. Lurking um, in the shadows. He was kind of. <laughs> Hanging out in the closets, waiting. <laughs> so waiting. what So what do you think? Uh, uh, how are you feeling about the new direction of IWC so far? Um, overall, I like the, uh, the, the, the freshness of, you know, the reset button, you know, all jokes aside, it really, uh, it helps to just shake things up and, you know, mm-hmm. um, just make, open up a whole lot of opportunities for things. But, you know, at the same time, I find myself in quite the conundrum and a little bit of a, a, a paradox of, you know, depending on what attitude I'm feeling and, uh, everybody's saying I turned into such a bad guy. I never really saw myself as a bad guy. Just have, uh, you know, a dark side that sometimes needs to be let out. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how the uh, the the roll of dice takes that. Certainly, certainly. Um, and of course, uh, you had a big match the next day. Um, I'm not even sure who put this on. I, I I saw the poster a couple of times, but but I didn't really get to dig into it. Uh, but there's a big uh, uh, kind of a rumble themed uh, event as well. Uh, I think it happened just north of the city, and you took on uh, actually Sabu yesterday. No, yeah, not your first time either. No, um, you know, I never would have thought that you know, you know, being a kid going to ECW shows at like Ross Dre Rice Garden, uh, you know, downtown the David Lawrence places like that, um, that I would ever be really like wrestling some of the guys that I've actually been in the ring with from ECW. So it's awesome to actually you know have that kind of uh, like position. And to be even have wrestled, you know, one of the guys I look up to the most in Sabu. And this is like the fifth time. I mean, it's crazy to me. Like we've wrestled in Cleveland a couple times in Wisconsin, wow. one of which being a ladder match, you know, uh, then just last December for Extreme Rising uh, for that thing, we were uh, at the ECW arena. So the first time we've ever, uh, you know, did anything in Pittsburgh. And I hope, uh, hope we did a good job. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's good to see you're getting around a bit uh, and then taking on these guys. I know you got uh, AJ Styles. You're beating a, a, a Gan here coming up. I think it was that Remix Pro you're doing that with. Yeah, me and AJ Styles part two. Uh, got a little bit of something to prove, you know. Um, I held my own and then some last time, but, you know, still took the Super Styles clash and lived to tell about it. So maybe uh, he who coops and runs away lives to coop another day. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so I I, I, I got to bring this up. Uh, we, we you and I shared a moment. Of course, uh, I, I was, I've always been a big fan of Ninja Turtles, and obviously you are too. Uh, we, oh, we're yeah. coming out to the Ninja Rap. I, I see you with the turtle shell, and of course, just look at the merch, man. Just look, just look at it, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we we had a lot of fun. A fellow, you're a fellow uh, hero in half shell uh, this weekend. We took this picture because uh, I had a really awesome hoodie for my Christmas present <laughs> this year. So thank you for letting me borrow and complete with the shell. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so it's still, and I, I love to see it, it's still going. I, and one, the kids got to love it. I mean, Ninja Turtles never went away. Uh, that, that's tremendous. Uh, so, I mean, hey, how did that play off? Is there Ninja Turtles in Russia? Um, I did not see any uh, Ninja Turtles so much stuff, but um, I, apparently, you know, Ninja Turtles 2 has been around long enough. They were totally down with the ninja rap thing, and uh, they uh, they all it was just like nice. it was a really kind of a over thing. Nice, and of course we 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 are doing a show, and I know this isn't the first time for you, uh, 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 doing a show with uh, the Super Shredder coming up in Meadville, uh, Kevin Nash. Oh, so I can't I, wait. I'm I I need I know I'm going to be busy that day. I need somebody to sign my tape of uh, Ninja Turtles two that already has vanilla ice on it. Has to happen. It has to happen. <laughs> I have, I got a gift from a fan um, from AIW that uh, um, they he, he gave me him and his brother gave me the single from uh, Vanilla Ice Ninja Rap on VHS, and wow. that is one of the 
uh, shout out to Particle Dawn. He makes like music, like remixes for like all kinds of indie wrestlers. Man, wow. it's awesome. That's great. That's great. Um, they ever consider coming out to the new version of Ninja Rap? You know, uh, some people. Um, well, there's that one, uh, uh, the Vanilla Ice one, the yeah, like, yeah, harder yeah. one. Yeah. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go what what? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I actually did at Extreme Rising a couple times accidentally because they played the wrong music. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, it's been suggested to me to come out to uh, Shell Shock by the. Uh, for the, from the Wiz Khalifa on the new Ninja Turtles movie. Uh, I'm, but, not, uh, I'm not down with that one. Just that, <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, I like the beat, but I mean, like, Ninja Raps, where it's at. I know, I know it's blasphemy because I'm in Pittsburgh, but I'm not a Wiz fan. Yeah, it, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, exactly. You know, they can't all be, I don't know, basic sickness. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That you, it's funny you should say that. I ran into somebody uh, from way back in the day, Ryan from Basic Sickness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Working out at the gym with me, bro. That's Getting right. swell on. Uh, I ran into him at the ICP mosh pit. Yeah, he headbutted me <laughs> in the face, man. Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to come out with a shiner from that one. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, with that, you know, okay, so we usually have the question, you know, you're a returning guest, so we don't usually kind of you know, try to rehash the same questions. But let's modify one. Tell me the best thing and worst thing about wrestling in Russia. The best thing about wrestling in russia was the uh overreaction of every fan oh yeah because it it was so uh pristine it was such a virgin crowd you know that mm-hmm. uh and it was still on like an intimate independent level you know like it, it was uh you know like a stage ae or something along those lines you know what i mean nice. so um yeah that was definitely the best part the worst part is uh only knowing a little bit of the words like how to say thank you and how to swear and how to say awesome <laughs> and cool and you know those uh, radical terms that I would just say randomly um, but people would say thank you and then they would uh, they would say ninja in a funny way that I can't duplicate with my own mouth <laughs> and uh, it was it was endearing but I wish I could understand completely what they were saying nobody teaches Russian in schools that I'm aware of it's no, always, it's and always, uh, I mean, I have I have Google Google Translate yeah. on my phone, but you know that only works on Wi-Fi. So it's like, what the hell are you supposed to do? Yeah, exactly. Well, awesome facade. He's at one facade on the Twitters. Uh, you got a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, you know, let us know what, what where where can people check you out uh, in the future and online otherwise. Um, you can check me out on the uh, Instagram and on the Twitter at one facade. Also uh, on Facebook facade you can like me and friend me and you know do all the internet stuff and then uh one facade underground on youtube is where all you'll get all the secret fan cam links of all of my newest uh acrobatic antics nice nice um and did i see something that you're going to be at the uh arnold schwarzenegger thing yeah um, this year uh my girlfriend um works for uh Primera sports who does concrete and uh she um you know, has worked with him, and she went to Arnold last year, and you know, Olympia and stuff. And this year, uh, she's doing it again. And uh, I'm actually uh, um, booked to go out there and you know, do some of that. And I'm interested to, you know, uh, try to diversify some of my uh, marketing abilities, if you will. And I think it'll be some good exposure as well as uh, I heard there's some NXT business going on out there. I want to check some of that out. Check it out. Good luck getting a so, ticket, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you never know. You know, you could be the next Blue Pants. Hey, but uh, <laughs> it's funny. I gotta leave to go down to uh, Charleston for IWA East Coast Zero G tournament um, on Saturday the seventh. So uh, I won that a couple years ago. Hopefully, I can uh, take that cup home once more. Nice, nice. Well, thanks a lot, friend of the show, Facade, fellow hero in the half show. Uh, check him out online. And uh, you can also check him out, ProWrestling.com. We got matches, including that one from this uh, past weekend at IWC Reloaded. We'll be posted here well in the morning. By the time you hear this online, uh, it's uh, it's going to be out there and a whole bunch of other stuff. And the best of Facade is coming this year, I swear. I swear we're going to yeah. get to that. I have a lot of them yeah. on my list, but this is going to happen. So We're going to take over the world together. We're going to paint the world green. <laughs> you can check me out at ProWrestlingTees.com slash one too. There you go. And uh, maybe next time I'll give you the golden ticket so you can come to the Warp Zone with me. We can play with our Dragon Daggers.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. And with that, we're going to talk a little bit uh, indie wrestling and some reactions, Eamon. Thanks, Org. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's time to talk about some of the interesting stuff that happened. Obviously, not a lot happened in the world of wrestling this weekend. Nope. Um, not a lot of stuff. Great time um, to experiment. Uh, well, <laughs> One of, the, one of the small small news bits was that uh, a certain weekly episodic television show couldn't hold their uh, regular wrestling show because of a snowstorm. Um, but uh, because of the cancellation of Raw in Hartford, uh, it allowed for a couple of independent wrestling groups, and for, by a couple, I mean a lot, uh, to uh, uh, spend that day releasing some free content, uh, getting people, giving people an alternative uh, to uh, to Monday nights, obviously uh, coming off of a bit of a backlash from the major wrestling organization in the country. Um, yeah, I, I think it was very smart on their part to to take the time to show people what they had to offer. A great opportunity that they're not directly competing with a Raw, and and the, I think the only detriment to the Raw 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 alternative. Raw alternative yeah, I, I'm trying to keep the L in there. <laughs> Uh, was that it was actually kind of a good raw, you know, at yeah. least by my standards, you know, and I think a lot of people too going into Rumble. Um, but still, I mean, it was still something. To, even that, a lot, of, you know, some people are not happy with and would rather watch, you know, you on the mic, for instance. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I thought it was really cool, and and, and um, I know myself, it was just like it, it was kind of. I saw one tweet from like Beyond saying, "Hey, we're going to show Alternative again or something, or hey, maybe they're showing something different." And I'm like, "Oh, we should do something." we should get on this bandwagon you know right uh it would one thing to kind of do it on top of what they did last week but now it's just like well everybody can do something right because they were just repeating stuff so it was like well what can we do um we got in the uh, into the fray um i posted uh rwa's aggression six with matt hardy against ryan mitchell and iwc's last year's super indie which had a ton of good great stuff a lot mm -hmm. of friends of the show a lot of big stuff again you know super indie's like you know Hey, like half the guys in NXT have been in Super Indie. Okay, I mean not half, but a few of them have and been champions right. as such. Um, so I, I thought that was a really good point for that. And we got a few. We got a few hits, like nothing crazy. Like I think we got like a hundred hits on the one and like eighty on the other. You know, something like that. But it, I mean, but that's still, still, that's a lot of yeah. uh, the eyeballs that maybe didn't check it out before. And yeah. it was a whole show. You can check. And when's the last time any of these can see? Oh, this is what their whole show looks like. You know, and and right. and, 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 and check it out for you know warts and all. What what does that look like? You know, and then maybe like people have maybe, maybe haven't come to an iwc show and, and they're in that loop maybe maybe have checked it out um yeah. uh, uh vow other friends of the show we talk about vicious outcast wrestling um they posted a few matches including i know they saw i saw la russo chris la russo uh, who's been on the mayhem show we gotta have him back on the show I, I hear he's been doing great things and i know he's been uh at a lot of ring of honor shows and and, and future of honor and stuff uh him taking on davy richards from um i think just this past month maybe mm -hmm. uh so uh, that's that's really cool I, I, uh you have and i i think both you and amen posted the same thing here uh chikara had something going on right yep uh chikara did uh, uh three hours of uh, free matches uh, a lot of really good matches and a lot of like you said a lot of telling matches to the stuff that's in wwe now uh there's you know brian danielson there was claudio castagnoli sarah del rey uh brody lee you know numerous guys but a lot of also their guys too and and um, they had some really cool stuff, really good matches that, that they showcased mm -hmm. um, on their um, on their website. Yep. Uh, there was groups like Shikara, uh, Smash Wrestling out of Canada uh, released uh, one of their events for free uh, on a live stream. Uh, ISW, uh, Interspecies Wrestling, released their Slamtasia uh, 5 event uh, for free. Um, there was um, a lot of groups. Uh, Lucha Underground, of all things, was, I think, the smartest of anything. Uh, they definitely they played up the whole Blizzard uh, motif of you know the reason why Brawl was canceled and 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 put some content on uh, on uh, El Rey, which was a really smart move I think and and, and it's it's you kind of see the these indies that understand you know that it's important to take advantages take advantage of of moments like that. Oh, certainly. And, and, and a question I posed earlier, do you think you would have seen this extensive of a response if Roll Alternative didn't happen the week before? Like, I, I, I know. I don't it, think it, so. It, I think, 
I, in my moves, I feel inspired by, it. I was like, geez, we need to do more. You know, I, 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 yeah. I try to schedule tweets about new releases and such for Sorgatron Media. And I have access to the IWC account a little bit. I, I mostly just do stuff related to the DVD releases. Um, mm-hmm. I don't do it a, a, as a whole. Um, and, uh, it, and I, you know, that, that's the easy, that's the low hanging fruit. It's like you do, you hashtag WWE raw and, and it pops up, you know, if anybody's yeah. searching for that, it will pop up in the conversation a little bit, you yeah, know, we tweet, like for inspire, I made sure, I made sure like, Hey, we've got a bunch of free shows on our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. We got some free matches up there as well. Tag it raw Hartford and, yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. So like, like that kind of stuff really makes a difference. Yeah. And the social, I can't, cause for those that don't know, I actually run some, the, most of the social media stuff for Inspire. We got a lot of traction Monday and, and Sunday as well um, the, because of this sort of move of – this whole motif of alternative and promoting alternative wrestling uh, as opposed to the mainstream stuff. And I think if Beyond Wrestling didn't do the raw alternative, people wouldn't have had that idea to – not go against WWE, but create create something as to showcase that hey, there's so much more out there. And that that's really I think the message that a lot of the good a lot of the groups that did this can't put across. It wasn't oh WWE's terrible or yeah the Royal Rumble was really shitty. Am I right, guys? Mm-hmm. Like it was it was based in around positivity, and the response has been amazing. I know. Numerous people that have you know gotten to see Inspire now that originally didn't know who we were, and 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 that's phenomenal. Um, and I like to I like to hope that that happened uh, for these same groups. And and I mentioned it on the the main Mayhem show. Uh, if you know you you were the one of the one of the people that canceled your WWE Network subscription, I think that's awesome. But take that nine ninety nine and spend it. Go to Smart Mark Video and spend it on a DVD of of your favorite or something that sticks out to you or, or anywhere, you know, or, you know, find something that you really love. And, 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 you know, there's how many independent wrestling companies in this world and, and, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, take away the bad ones and how many independent wrestling groups are there in this world. They're still, you know, a, a staggering amount. I feel like we're getting to the point where it's like what's happened with music. Like mu- music has been very decentralized. Um, yeah. You know, the conversation amongst um, creatives is, is uh, we will never have another Aerosmith, Kiss, Beatles, super band because there are too many options. It's been spread out too far. They're not mm-hmm. making enough money off of Spotify and iTunes, you know, um, and the CD is dead and they've lost their control to mark everything up uh, yeah. amongst other reasons, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, and now uh, WWE still has the stranglehold. They're still the primary provider, but there's a lot of options and they're getting a foothold and there's getting opportunities and, and there's, there's, um, there's going to get to this point, uh, you know, we talk about Monday Night Raw, uh, you know, uh, versus Nitro and how there was like double the audience when they started competing with each other. It was like, oh, they're two different audiences. Holy crap. I, was right. talking with, I think I was talking with Matt Carlin's about this. He's reading the Death of WCW book. And uh, I think when you see those dwindling, dwindling numbers of Raw, you know, how much are people stopped watching wrestling? And I know it's not going to be a big number. I know it's not the the combined numbers of what they had in the 90s because there are a lot of casual fans. And I'm sure I'm sure uh, a quarter of those, at least, if not half, are not watching wrestling. But mm-hmm. when you're starting to see those dwindling Monday numbers right now, I'm wondering how many of those are just latching on to their Chikaras and Ring of Honors and, and, and whatever You can else. only... Oh, you can really only hope. Uh, I, that's one thing that um, Drew Pinero brought up, but the reason that he felt, you know, that this kind of movement was necessary was the fact that there are so many cases where he fears that when you get when you get tired of the main product, you you abandon the entire um, genre entirely, right. and then you don't follow the the minor groups. I think that that's very valid. I think people – how many times do we refer to WWE as wrestling in, in, in discussion or in conversation? We don't refer to it as right. WWE. We refer to it as wrestling because it's the scope of wrestling. It is what the wrestling business is. A lot of people feel that way. And, a lot, and, and not even that they 
have that feeling, but it just comes naturally to say that WWE, to, to assume, to, to put together that WWE is all wrestling. Because that's pretty much, you know, what it is, kind of. But it, there's so much more out there. And the more mm-hmm. we, we teach people and, and show people that wrestling is not limited to what you see I on your television news. screen. I bring the good news of independent wrestling. Yeah. I and feel like in, I did that last week. Even in the, Not even independent, but I think, you know. Alternative it, wrestling. Alternative, but like even international. And, and like there's so much mm-hmm. that isn't, you know, what, the, what Vince McMahon or Triple H or whoever is producing. Um, so... And, and that's fine if you enjoy what they're producing, but mm. it's not all that wrestling is, and it's not all that wrestling can. And that's part of the conversation, like the the well, we do dip, need a different name because this is alternative wrestling or or, mm-hmm. or whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, um, I mean, but maybe it should be the alternative mayhem. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not changing the name of the podcast. <laughs> no, yet. no, 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 no. Um, how do you feel about filth on this show? <laughs> I did. I did curse. I think at least twice on this show. I think so. Just now. I don't know. It's it's casual. I I, I that that's a whole other podcast conversation. That's a, that's. A, Anyways, go, go support Wrestling Mayhem Show on Patreon to find out what we're talking. about. Exactly. Exactly. So. Patreon dot com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show by proxy. That does help this show as, as well. There's links yes. over at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Um. But anyways, with that, as far as supporting wrestling, um, we support wrestling in our own ways and we do. make well, not living but uh, we 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 are no. benefited in some ways by wrestling we i i from the enjoyment of, of yeah. participating in we're it. not there for the payday that's for sure god but, no. but nobody there is and probably should be um um if i can if i can bring up one thing real quick that's okay. old, that that uh came out about uh, inspire pro yes uh we've got nominated for some awards which are really cool nice. um the the Thesi Awards, which are um, for those that don't know, the Thesis are uh, obviously you know Blue Thes, you know being the you know the focus of that title. Uh, it's actually the oldest uh, wrestling fan awards in wrestling history, uh, wow. going back to the 1990s. Um, so this is and it, it very much gives a landscape of how wrestling, from a fan's perspective, has grown over the years based off of these awards. Um, and, and we've got nominated at Inspire Pro for three awards, uh, which is crazy and, and really cool. We got nominated for Best Promotion, which is awesome, um, among some really, really cool independent and international groups, uh, which is amazing. Uh, we got nominated for Best Gimmick uh, with uh, one of our characters, The Great Depression, if you've never seen The Great Depression. Uh, he is a, a monster from the 20s. Uh, who uh, wears a, a burlap sack over his head, and he's very much uh, a, a lost soul in many of the sense. And then he's, you know, definitely one of our favorite uh, creations. Um, it's a lot and, of fun. I, I like what you guys are doing with him. It's, it's really interesting. Thank you. It's uh, different. But it's it's different. Cool to have, and it's cool to have him uh, nominated for that. Uh, and the third one we're nominated for is actually Best Feud uh, with uh, Lance Hoyt, a.k.a. Lance Archer, oh, a.k.a. Vance Archer from WWE. Uh, his feud with our ring announcer Brandon Stroud, friend of the show, uh, that's nominated for uh, best feud. So um, that's awesome to be, you know, put in those awards, and 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 that's really amazing. Um, if you want to vote in the 2014 Thesis, uh, you can go to MightyGodKing.com. That's where the the poll is held. Uh, you basically get to, and you can write in different people. Um, the the list of names and and of of, not, of of nominees and, and stuff is very extensive and, and well put together. And it spans a lot of uh, mainstream wrestling and independent wrestling and international wrestling. So there's a little something for everyone. And, and I think that's really cool. So um, definitely if you, if you get the opportunity and you like me and you like this show or you like inspire pro or whatever, uh, definitely go vote for us. Cause that would make us feel really good. Uh, so definitely uh, go check that out. Awesome. Go check that out. Uh, and of course, big weekend uh, going on here. We had, of course, uh, the the IWCs reloaded, as we mentioned with Facade, about uh, you know the, the reset button. Oh, dude, Amen, Amen. I had nine, <laughs> ten. Are we gonna talk about this? Nine, ten. Like, what do you want to know about it? Because <laughs> I, I, because I, with that that side kind of gave it away for me. 
Well, okay. I don't. You, uh, you, you haven't seen me at an indie show, for one thing. But I it, haven't. I, you need to come up. Uh, we both need to do an exchange. I need to go down there and experience Inspire. You need to come here and experience uh, uh, IWC, RWA, yeah. whatever the case may be. You need to go to Meadville with me. <laughs> but no, yeah. But, but I can only assume that there was a factor at this show that didn't really. Uh, well, okay. Uh, help things. Mr. Plumber, Mr. Plumber, friend of the show, we've had you on before. We're going to have, have you on again now that you have a new role in wrestling. And we actually had him on Wrestling Mayhem Show a few weeks ago. Um, just, you know, just kind of BSing and make sure to plug that the show is coming up and everything. Fanta- dude, fantastic show. I, uh, uh, most, of the response, like most of the responses I got was like, wow, that was that was fun. You know, it was different. It was, I mean, it was, um, and he, he mentioned reset button facade. Um, it was a great gimmick, you know. I feel bad. Somebody somebody gave, gave Sorgatron Media credit for the reset button. I'm like, dude, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been screwing up when it's supposed to play. Um, um, but, you know, we're on an indie budget that's not, you know, this isn't like, my other gigs as a video producer or anything like that. Right. right. So, I mean, we're running on, I mean, I, I, I've talked uh, several points about what's this studio. I, I said, this is a $50 studio, not a million dollar studio. Like I visited in California uh, a few weeks ago. Right. And it's even less so for the, the roving production. <laughs> um, so, so a core time, it's a really good atmosphere. We have this venue. They have lights over the ring, so we get the blackout, so it doesn't look like we're in the basketball court that we are. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a screen up, and we have a projector, and you see me live switching on the screen to 400 people in the arena. <laughs> Which, I don't... That doesn't bug me. That doesn't bother me. I don't even think about it, right? You don't get a stage front scenario. No, no. I, I don't even... I don't even. The only time I acknowledge it is when we're doing something on the screen, like a backstage promo, or I'm playing a, uh, like a two-minute video for the intro or something, and then mm-hmm. I look, and the screen's right above me, and I'm looking out, and I see the projector, and everybody in the back row turning around and looking at me. You know, not me, <laughs> but like in my direction. I'm like, oh, hello, everybody. You know, <laughs> it's like that's that's the only time I realize that. You know, and it sinks right. in. I was like, huh, there's people out there. Uh, <laughs> And they're paying attention to what I'm doing. Uh, but mainly it's background, right? Man, it looks good. It looks great on video and everything. Uh, uh, somebody's been bringing um, um, lights. Adding even bigger. Like, we have these crazy moving lights and everything all over the place. You know, I, if you get a chance, even to check out some of the most recent videos of, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'll show you. And, and, and you, you see it. And the interest just looks so much bigger. It, it has a great feel, right? Um, but... There were like 10 videos for me to play. And, and not just like in between matches where I could take a couple of seconds for the most part. And it was like, we're going to go to the reset button. Uh, for, <laughs> like in the middle of promos and stuff. Or as the next four entrants are each randomly selected by reset buttons. And and, uh, and uh, my reset machine needs to make sure the right video is playing, right? Uh, so, because I could have screwed up a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. At one point, I forgot to switch back to the video feed to hide the fact I was bringing up the next video. Thankfully, I didn't show the list of videos to spoil the rest of the night. <laughs> <clears throat> the the, the, the <clears throat> peril. Of, of this is this is this is my experience with the indie show. So, uh, but no, and, and to the point, it, it was actually Mr. Plummer made those fantastic videos. I don't know what he's using. He's not creating graphics. I don't know what he's using as a resource. I really need to talk with him because I have this problem where I always want to make everything by hand, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not that great of a designer, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I need his assets, man, if I'm going to keep doing this. Um, but uh, no, no, he's I I, 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 I gotta say, uh, Justin Plummer, he's a guy. Go and get real for a second, Eamon. Um, he popped up and wanted to be, and we've talked about this on the show, wanted to be part of IWC, got involved the way he did, did, did Aftershock. Um, um, I was asking me questions as the video guy. And I, I don't know what his knowledge of editing and such was going into this job. Mm-hmm. But uh, he turns out a fantastic product. That Aftershock has become tremendous and uh had become tremendous it has now ended and since his role has has shifted obviously right. um those videos that he's been doing have been tremendous you know um it's, it really is a team effort like i do what i do he does what he does jesse who does a lot of the graphics and and the website uh as uh, leaps and bounds from when i first started working with these guys 
Um, right. And that he's shifted into what he is and becoming an on-screen character and the, and the owner behind the scenes as well. Um, I think he put together something really cool there. Um, and it was a nice mix. You know, again, the reset button was a great gimmick, you know, as called what it is. Um, and I hope there's something to that. Already I'm seeing like, okay, we got Combat and Clearfield 8 coming up. It's like, really? We're going to use the same name? What's going on here? And then <laughs> I looked at it just like, Cage Combat and Clearfield 8? What? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get a heads up on this. You know, I'm not in the secret meetings most of the time. Um, um, there was a couple little tidbits I was in these secret meetings on Facebook uh, uh, about, but other than that, like I, and I don't, I honestly, I don't like to know, you know, I hate right. when, when, when I'm given the graphics for super indie in advance and such, you know, it, it just, just kills me as, as the fan inside dies a little bit every year that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I hate, I hate having the run sheet for the night. Uh, <laughs> um, but to, to be honest, they, they do keep a lot of secrets for me, even on that. Um, to the point where it's like, oh, this is happening. Get that guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's indie wrestling. This is what it goes. It, uh, the TV is not, you know, or not TV, but the, the video production is on, on the back of their minds, depending on where they're at. If we're shooting for TV, it'd be, it'd be different. Prime was a whole different setup and meticulous and, and timed and, and very interesting. Um, but that's for television. It, it, it's very specific. So, um, but no, I, very, very good vibes from everything. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to do something because I, I'm not going to be able to continue this on a 10 year old laptop, uh, for the graphic part of it. Um, on, on, at the, the core time shows is the only place where we do this. Um, and, and I love what we do, but it's just kind of been an added on and added on. And I'm just like, man, we gotta, we gotta do something else. Like not, not right. we need to do something else, but we need to become a little better and efficient at it <laughs> so but that's i mean that's what we do you, you what we do with this podcast right we add on a little bit add on a little bit we add on a little, uh, maybe we could do another hour show that's an interview and and, and do that you know maybe, yeah. uh, maybe maybe we can fit this show in here you know and <laughs> and 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 and, and uh, maybe we can we can add this computer here and put a fourth person in here uh, on these shows and that's what's happening with the wrestling and i think that happens on the production side i think that probably you know happens on your side amen you know oh, yeah, uh, on, on the planning side you know it's like you know oh, what if we do this at the shows you know what if we do raffles and prizes at the show and it'll get people interested and stick around you know i mean yeah, it, we it's, definitely you know it, it's um, I don't know I can't, why is the term so by me, but you, you test you test the waters and you see what works and what doesn't. Right, right. Um, and, 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 and it, trial and error. I'm thinking. And I think the thinking. best the best promotions. You guys are a, a tremendous example of this because you guys definitely figured out how you go as you go. You yeah. know, there's another promotion here in the area. I had a chance to talk to uh, some people involved with it over the last uh, week or so, um, and they're trying to get it together. Right, I see. I don't think they're going to become an Inspire Pro. I think they're going to become something, you know, more than they are. You know, uh -huh. not, I mean, I'm not expecting them to be the next IWC or anything. And any progression is good. Right, I, right. I mean, but and, and, and I always worry that there is more than we can handle in the area. But they're handling a different part of the area. And we saw this this spot show last night with Facade and Sabu. <laughs> And, and I think Rhino was there too, actually, um, who's also going to be up in Meadville. Uh, I'll have to talk to him about boats again. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, it's really cool to see that. And it's expanding out. VOW, they're not in the area. You know, they're not the three promotions working in a 10 square mile radius like, like has always been in the south of Pittsburgh here. They're all yeah. the way out. Like, it's an hour away. When I'm like, man, I want to go to a VOW show. Man, it's an hour late. Then I feel like, I think about what you do, and it's, I'm just like, <laughs> Man, really, I can't go an hour away to to, to check this out. But you know, uh, responsibilities and such. Oh yeah, um, I think just pe the the people that try something different and, and attempt to do something that's beyond what's what's set out as these are the rules of of a wrestling company. This is how things should be. Um, I think are the ones that are really successful in the end. Um, uh, beyond wrestling, beyond wrestling. Has one of the weirdest concepts ever. Let's just do shows with no fans, and 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 just have them for the wrestlers, and then sell DVDs and 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 video on demand stuff. And then they've expanded to now they're selling out uh, Fet Music in Providence, um, and and having these really awesome monthly events. 
um, you know, it's amazing to see progression like that. And then any of that is really, any progression is good progression. I, I, I feel, I've watched old Inspire shows and I'm like, really, that's what we used to be? Like, that's that's insane right. to me. Right. You know, I, I, I you know, floored how, you know, we've progressed. And, and it's cool to see other groups that are maybe lower down on, on the totem pole getting recognition and getting, you know, some, some you know, not, uh, publicity, but also just more people with their eyes on them. Getting buzz. That's what it's about. Getting buzz, yeah. That's what it's about. Speaking of buzz, Indy's coming up. A ton of them. <laughs> I haven't so picked, many. I got a list. I didn't pick anything out of the list. I don't know I if you did. Either. I I I... <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, guys. This, this I, I, I did post this list that's in there, Doc. Um, if you go to go look up Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Facebook group on uh, on Facebook, um, I did post this, um, and it also has the email address and Twitter for Nate Stein that I don't know how I got on this, this list. Um, but if you're interested in this, and, and, and there's also he's some kind of I don't know, he's some kind of promoter or something, um, um, PR or, or something. Because we also get a lot of stuff for CZW, uh, WSU, uh, B- uh, Valkyrie, uh, a bunch of other promotions mm-hmm. I've never heard of before. So uh, if you want to get on, in on the loop on that, um, I have that information over there for you to check out. Um, I, I, I imagine, um, because there's a thing, if you're a wrestling promotion that's not on the list, they say email them. Um, so so there's that. And everybody that I, I know of is on here. Uh, so, right. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? And I, I always mess up. I never catch these guys. I want to double check. So I was also talking with the guys from uh, some of the guys from Black Diamond Wrestling, uh, mm-hmm. just over line, typically over in West Virginia. Also doing great stuff. Another shout out to them, Black Black Wrestling, Black Diamond Wrestling dot com. Another group. And again, I talked with this with our our, our friend from uh, um, oh, uh, Headlocks for Breakfast dot com. I hope I had that right in my head. Um, they have just just completely reshaped what the hell they are in representation tremendous looking website uh the guy i talked to this weekend actually is is involved like he's like he's like yeah i'm the content guy for the site what website has somebody specifically called the content guy that's what i call when like i i (laughs) I had a content person for one of my clients working on a website right like that somebody Mm -hmm. is actually thinking that way in indie wrestling for a website is awesome you know um that that's that's a thought you know uh, again lots of friends of the show from the area on this you know uh, mcchesney facade i think are involved yeah actually they were a main event on one of the shows i saw posted on here um but again doing what is this i i have to check this out there's something on here called the dish with bobby casserole episode five uncle bob <laughs> What is going on over in Black Diamond? Check it out. I need a, I need a match between Bobby Castro and Dan Sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Dan Sandwich, I think, is a part of this. Oh, I mean, is, I well, think, then how has that not happened? I mean, maybe this is just inevitable. You know, maybe that's his manager or something. That'd be tremendous. I don't know. Maybe I don't know maybe. if he was embracing the, the Dan Sandwich name the way I, I uh, would imagine him to be or DJ LB that went nuts about this guy. Oh, I, I really? saw him once. and. <laughs> And I think I sent you the super cut of, of all the names he was called instead of Dan Sandwich. Like, uh, pastrami on rye uh, with the leg drop, you know. I mean, that, that was from Church, uh, who has been on the show. So, mm-hmm. With that, is that it? Is that all the wrestling fit to talk about? Thank you, Facade, our, our, our Russian-bound friend, uh, for coming mm-hmm. on and talking with us. Uh, go check him out, One Facade, on Twitter. And, of course, look up Facade on Facebook. And then check out all the places he's at, Remix, Remix, Rest, Remix Pro Wrestling, excuse me, uh, International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, he's in Vicious Outcast Wrestling. And if you're uh, in Columbus, check out that Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger uh, event going on out there. And you'll see him. He, I'm sure he'll be the one in Neon Zubas. Go according to his Instagram, that's his daily wear. So go check that out as well. Um, with that, hey, uh, thanks to uh, uh, give us a shout to basicsickness.com, Facade's gym mate, of course. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, check us out uh, at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, uh, Facebook, Wrestling Mayhem Show, Google Plus, um, right, Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. And of course, you can contact us at contact us at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com or 412 206 WMS0 and subscribe to us and all the links at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. But uh, uh, of course, please uh, rate us and such and comment over on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the like. Amen, he's at Amen too, please. That's right. 
Always, always aiming to please. At Sorgatron, uh, WrestlingMamShow.com, Pittsburgh, excuse me, PittsburghWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.us, InspireProWrestling.com. And we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you continue, as always, to support that indie wrestling for your suitable Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. 